All right, guys, you may remember a vlog from a few weeks ago, my first night out with the Skywatcher Star Adventurer, and I really wanted to get a nice shot of Andromeda, stacking multiple images to get loads of lovely detail, but I was only able to get a single exposure. So I'm hoping today I can do a bit of a better job, get multiple images for some stacking, and get some better detail. So stay tuned. Okay guys, if you haven't watched the last video, I'll link it up above and down below. But the main reason I couldn't get multiple images of Andromeda was there was just too much mist in the air and the lens was just doing up. So today I'm going to tackle that by two ways. First, I've already got a lens warmer on and I'll put a link in the description to that. And that's basically plugged into a USB battery bank, which I Velcroed onto my tripod. I'm also going to put the lens hood on the lens. But before I do that, I'm going to focus. And last time, I don't think I was perfectly focused. So this time I'm going to use a Botinov mask and I'm using the Case Bright Star filter. And basically putting this filter on the lens will cause diffraction spikes and allow me to find the perfect focus. So I mount the filter to the front of the lens using the Case K8 filter holder. And then when you take a test shot, you get three lines or diffraction spikes around the stars and you want them to perfectly intersect on the star. So with a little bit of manual focus adjustment, now you can see that all the spikes are perfectly intersecting on the star and now we've got perfect focus. The other thing I learned from last time was that 150 seconds was probably a little bit too long. I wasn't getting a very good success rate. So I'm going to bring it down to 120 seconds this time. I'm going to do two minute exposures and see how that turns out. The only unfortunate thing is the skies in the last location I was shooting at were way darker than these skies. I think I'm in a bottle class four, maybe a bottle class three right now. But it's a beautiful night, it's crispy cold. I'm gonna get this slide and then hopefully let that run for an hour or two hours. Fingers crossed. It's been about an hour and a half, so it's time to check on the camera. And things are looking very frosty. It's pretty cold, it's about minus four at the moment. So we're looking good, guys. The lens hasn't frosted over or misted up. So the, the lens hood and the lens warmer have done the trick. We've got a lot of images, so hopefully, not hopefully, should be able to stack these. Some of them have a little bit of trailing, that's from periodic error. So not gonna be able to use them all, but I think I've got enough to do a good stack. What I'm gonna do now is shoot some dark frames. Now dark frames are basically taken at the exact same settings as the light frames, which is what I've already taken, but you put the lens cap on. Uh, and that way you create a map of the sensor basically in any hot pixels or stuck pixels or and then we'll subtract those from the light frames later on I'll show you guys a little bit later on I'm gonna take about 16 dark frames that should take me about 24 minutes and so I'm just gonna stick the lens cap on now to do some dark frames And I nearly forgot to mention, but the dark frames have to be taken at the exact same temperature as the light frames. Yeah, the dark frames are really temperature dependent, so you have to take them at the same time as the light frames. Okay, so I ended up with 23 dark frames. Ideally, you want between 15 and 25. If you've got the time and you want to do more, you'll get a supreme dark frame. But ideally, 15 to 25 
is a really good amount of dark frames. I also took a hundred light frames and I know in the video I mentioned I was doing a shutter speed of two minutes but I actually brought that down to 90 seconds just to be safe. And this is what one of my light frames looks like. So as you can see, pretty round stars at 90 seconds. See a little bit of detail in Andromeda. Of course you can see the bright core but there's not much detail in the outer extent of the galaxy but out of the 100 light frames that i took 57 were acceptably round stars and 43 i found to be unacceptable so there's a little bit of star trek. for example this frame here you can see that there's a little bit of movement in the stars and again movement in the stars movement in the stars in a lot in that one so all of these were discarded the reason for the star trading is not because of bad polar alignment or because of wind or any motion of my setup it's to do a periodic error so because the motors are gear driven it's hard to create perfectly smooth slow motion with gears there's going to be occasions when the gears lock um and you know the motion slows down or maybe speeds up when the gears sort of lock on to the next one um, so you can expect a little bit of error. I don't know if this is a good rate or a bad rate. If you have any experience with the Star Adventurer, um, please let me know. But just over 50%, 90 second exposure is at 400 mil on a full frame. I think it's pretty good. Um, I'm reasonably happy. So I took all of the light frames that I was happy with and the 23 dark frames and I stacked them all together in a program called Deep Sky Stacker which is free. And this is how it came out. So as you can see now a lot more detail especially in the outer regions of the spiral galaxy. Looking really nice. A lot more detail now. So there's a lot of data in there, just needs to be edited now. A lot of you guys, after the first video, asked me to do a processing video. And the, the short answer to that is no. I really don't feel like I'm in a position to be teaching people how to edit deep space pictures right now. I'm still very much experimenting myself. I've only dabbled over the past few years. And I just don't feel like I have a solid personal workflow that I can teach. Up until now, I've basically been watching as many YouTube videos as I can possibly find, but I think the best resource out there is Astro Backyard. I'm sure a lot of you already know about Trevor and his channel, but he's got so many videos where he walks you through editing different deep space objects, and there are a lot of in-depth articles on his website as well, so you can sort of follow along. He also does premium content. He sells his personal workflow a little course, and once you see just how good the free content is on his website, you'll probably be convinced to pay for the, the premium tutorials as well. So I've basically just been learning a lot from, from Trevor's stuff um, and other videos that I found online and then obviously applying my own sort of personal touch um, and using editing skills that I've learned from landscape astrophotography um, over the past few years. But my final image, I'm quite happy with it. The, the colors came out really nice and I wasn't using my Astro modded camera here and I still got some nice pinks and sort of coloring the, the small amount of hydrogen alpha emission nebula there. But yeah, I'm overall just really pleased with it. And just to sort of back up what I was saying about processing, I tried to edit this image two or three times after this and I just couldn't get it looking as good as this again. So I can't even repeat my own process, so I shouldn't be teaching you guys right now. Um, but I'm really happy with this result. The Sony 100 to 400, it's pretty good for astrophotography, although you will notice um, a weird sort of diffraction spike pattern on particularly bright stars, especially when they're close to the edge of the frame. But overall, I'm quite pleased with this, and it's way better than my first attempt. I think now, to make things a little bit better, I'm going to look into auto-guiding. Now, auto-guiding, you basically attach a mini telescope and another sort of small camera, a guide camera, to 
your system to your setup and that will basically correct the periodic error so you should be able to get much longer exposures and that will of course produce much better images because you can get much more information in a single exposure and it means I can go after fainter targets and slightly more difficult targets so I think the next step now after I've played with it a few more times again is to look into auto guiding and of course I'll vlog the whole experience for you guys to join along so make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon I wish you good luck and clear skies